Hello again. It's time once more for a Friday shop update. Good evening to you and yours. I want to start out by first saying um, I apologize. Last week I did not get a video out. That was actually intentional, not accidental. Um, we wanted to try and shoot this past week and the previous week. We wanted to try and shoot a bunch of B-roll footage and edit together one of these updates a little bit better. <clears throat> um, kind of show you guys what I tend to talk about during the video. And we shot all that footage. We got everything ready to go. And man, we just ran out of time this week. So it wasn't all for nothing, but uh, you're going to get a standard Friday shop update. Just me walking around, talking with you. Now, it has gotten cold here, as you can tell by my sock hat and clothing choice. Um, it's about 30 something degrees outside right now and uh, inside the shop it's about 45. We actually have the heaters off right now because the heaters all make a bunch of noise. So that doesn't help with shooting videos. Anyway, because it's cold, that's when we get a bunch of people dropping their cars off. <laughs> of course, right? You always get your sports car prepped and ready when it's cold out. So, let's get started here. I got two, we're two, two, I got two weeks worth of stuff to talk to you guys about. Um, two of the cars that I'm going to talk to you about, I actually can't show you anything on because one of them's outside, stuck in the lot. It will not move. And the other one came in and left. So, Let's get to talking about them real quick. I am standing in the parts room here. I have actually done a lot of work here. A ton of trash has been thrown out of here. So it's looking a little bit better. I did do a lot of work in this room the past two weeks, uh, which has been good, but it still looks like a mess. That's my update on parts. So let's get to these cars then. Um, last update, uh, I showed you guys, uh, we talked about the Sebring 5000, that red Austin Healey replica. Um, it left. It left that Friday. However, it was too soon. It was too soon. It did not enjoy uh, leaving, I guess. I guess I'm just too nice to cars sometimes. I don't know. Um, the owner had it back for about a day and uh, sent me a message over the weekend and said, hey, uh, it's, it's, it's leaking transmission fluid everywhere. And I thought, oh no, that's the opposite of what we were going for. We were hoping it wouldn't leak any. And not only was it leaking, it was absolutely gushing, pouring out of that transmission. So I had her bring it back um, over the weekend. I got it inside and over the week, we went through it and did a lot of work on it to, to figure out what was going on. Now, that transmission had a cooler line leak. Not uncommon, not crazy but it had a leak. It wasn't aggressive. I mean, it was definitely putting out fluid, but when the car came back in, I mean, it was like a bloodbath. I, it was like I cut somebody's leg off without a tourniquet. I mean, it was just all the fluid was coming out badly. So what's causing the issue? Why is it leaking everywhere? Well, there were two things that I noticed. Number one, it was coming out of any seal that it could push fluid out of. That means we have a lot of pressure built up because it's not going to break every seal, but this was breaking every seal. So it's, 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 it's definitely got a problem there. It was building too much pressure. That's not good. We don't like to see that. The second thing was the fluid wasn't the typical automatic transmission fluid color of crimson red. It was, Foamy pink. Foamy pink fluid can mean two things. Either A, you have water in your fluid, in which case it'll look like a pink milkshake, but this was foamy pink, which is a little bit different than pink milkshake. Foamy fluid means you're getting air in the fluid. When you get air in the fluid, the fluid physically expands in volume, which could attribute to our pressure issues, and it doesn't work as well. So, what do we do? 
The first thing I did was I checked the breather vent on that transmission. Uh, there's one, it's on the driver's side of the transmission on a turbo Hydromatic 350. Checked that to see if the breather vent was open. Come to find out there wasn't actually a breather vent fitted. It was just the hole for the breather vent, which meant as I stuck the probe down in the hole, uh, eventually it bottoms out on another piece because it, it doesn't, it's not just a hole. There's like a plate in there and there's a smaller hole and it's a whole thing, and I don't know why they did it that way, but they did. So, nothing to clean out. It was clean. I thought, ah, eh, okay. So before I just immediately put an air chuck on the breather vent and put 120 PSI to it to see what happens, um, I thought, let's drop the pan. Now, when it came in here the first time, I had the intent of dropping the pan and changing the filter, but actually rethought that process and said, I don't really need to do that. It was a coolant line leak. There was nothing that was telling me that it needed to have the pan dropped and the filter changed. So I just fixed the coolant line leak, topped up the fluid, and she went on her way with no other leaks. But in this instance, I thought, let's drop the pan. Let's see what's going on underneath. Pulled the pan out, clean as a whistle inside. Looked like a brand new transmission. No metal inside, no chunks of stuff. All great. Fluid was pretty clean, as it should be since it's been actively being replaced <laughs> since it leaked. Um, and I thought, well, maybe the filter is loose down there. There's two screws that hold that filter up against the valve body. I thought maybe those screws were loose. No, they were good. They were tight. Okay, well, it's not a loose filter causing aeration. So I pulled them down. And as I dropped the filter down, I could see the gasket. Now, these use a gasket, not an O-ring. We work on a lot more Land Rovers here, and uh, Land Rovers, the Borg Warner type transmission fitted in those, actually uses an O-ring to seal the filter. Um, General Motors transmissions use a paper gasket. This paper gasket can only go on one way. And in this instance, somebody put it on the wrong way. <laughs> so one of the two holes in the filter uh, that go up into the valve body one of those holes had no gasket on it, and the other one only had part of a gasket sealing it up, which means it wasn't sealing it at all. So, pulled the filter off, bought a $12 new filter, put a new filter, new gasket on the right way, and uh, we buttoned her up. But before I did all of that, I took and I put 20 PSI air pressure to that breather hole. And at first, it definitely sounded clogged, and then suddenly it sounded like it was unclogged. So there was something clogging that breather line. We had a gasket on the wrong way. All of these things were causing that thing to just gush like old faithful. And where it would gush, it was really funny because I had the car running and I was like, I'm going to check the fluid level because sometimes those transmissions can aerate the fluid if there's not enough transmission fluid in the pan. So I thought I'll check the fluid level and see where it's at. And the minute I pulled that dipstick out, I got about a quarter inch out of that, that filled tube, out of the dipstick tube, and I was covered with transmission fluid. Not only that, I put it back in, we shut the car off, we waited 20 minutes, I came back to pull the dipstick tube back out, and it still gushed all over me. So that's how much pressure it was building up inside of it. And without a vent, that pressure had nowhere to go unless you opened the system somewhere, which is the easiest place to open is the dipstick tube and the minute i pulled that uh ceiling dipstick out she geysered all over me so super fun <laughs> now that's gone home it's out of here hopefully there's another uh warm day where the owner can get a chance to drive it around on to the next one uh the next car i wanted to get it inside tonight but it would not budge would not move it has a very, very dead battery. It's been sitting for a while. And that's sad because of what it is. It is a 1997. I know that's not, I know it doesn't sound old, but 97 is old, guys. Like, it is. It's, it's, an, it's an old car. Um, I remember 1980. I still have t-shirts from 1997 that I wear, okay? I still have socks from 1997 that I wear. It's a 1997 Land Rover Defender 
90 North American spec wagon, which were actually pretty uncommon. Um, more commonly found were the convertible soft top versions, uh, but wagons were a little uncommon. And this one's a wagon. So being a 97 means that it is an automatic transmission because that was the year the automatic transmission was put into the North American spec Defenders. Solid truck, really nice. I used to work on it when I worked for another shop. I used to work on it. The customer actually followed me along. That happens in this industry. Um, he followed me over here and uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. I haven't, it's, been, it's been 10 years since I've touched that truck. So, and it looks it. Next week, it'll be inside. You guys will get to see it. It looks like it's been sitting for 10 years. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure why he stopped driving it. I'm not sure the story behind it. I don't know if life got in the way or if something broke or what happened, um, but it's definitely been sitting a long time. Battery was stone cold dead and the transfer case, um, I tried to shift it into neutral uh, so that I could roll it and that would not budge, would not move. Even with power to the battery, 12 volts in the truck, battery charger on it, I could get it in to neutral in the transmission, but I need to put it into neutral in the transfer case and it would not go, um, which is never good. We don't like that. So I have a lot of work ahead of me to try and get that thing inside. And of course it's cold out and it's outside. So, you know, I got a lot of fun ahead of me here. A lot of cold days, bundling up. Yep. I'm going to build a hobo fire out outside next to it so I can keep warm. I got the sock hat for it. Okay. I got the hobo look going on. All right, I can do this. Don't don't put it above me. I'm not I'm not high class enough to not have a hobo fire. So the last car that we got in this week, yeah, we had three in this week. One went home. Already talked about it. Another one's outside. We just talked about that one. The third one, we've actually been waiting to get in here for a while. I've talked about it in previous videos. Um, it was out at a subcontractor. Now, the reason why we subcontracted out this job was because of time. We tend to do as much of the restoration process as we possibly can do in-house. That helps with quality control. That helps with the fit and finishes. That helps with, you know, if it gets, you know, if it's at another shop and it gets damaged, you know, how do we deal with this? All kinds of reasons why we try to do everything in-house. So there was a time crunch on this car. The owner um, having some medical problems. It, not, not my place to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, it's yeah. So having medical problems, there was a time crunch on this. We needed to get it done. We knew that we couldn't get it painted in the amount of time requested to get it finished. So we subcontracted, we subcontracted it out to another shop. Um, the other shop has done a, a really good job. They turned it around pretty quickly. Um, I think it's been, what, three months? Don't quote me on that. I don't, I don't remember. It's been a while, um, but not, it hasn't been years. It's been, you know, a few months. Um, and they got it uh, painted for us. Now, all the metal work was done on the car prior to leaving here. So their job was to take care of anything that they found metal work wise um, that I may have missed, which there wasn't a lot, if any. Um, their job was to block the car out, which uh, fill and block and sand and, and make sure, get some kind of dents here and there out, um, guide coats, primers, all kinds of things, put a color on it, put clear on it and get it back to us. Uh, we will be doing the cut and buff on the paint work because um, we can do that in house easily. Anyway, without further ado, let me show you the long-awaited Austin Healey 3000 BJ8 freshly painted. She looks good, huh? Now I shot some really nice B-roll footage of this thing outside in the sunlight um, on the trailer after we picked it up. And of course, my editing skills uh, aren't good, so uh, you get to see it in a cold, dimly lit garage at nighttime. You'll see a lot more of this car, so don't worry. Um, paint job looks phenomenal. Um, it is a black interior car, or at least it will be a black interior car. 
And initially, <laughs> when we, um, the owner had the seats recovered, again, something we tend to do in house, but the owner had the seats recovered by another shop. They looked good. Um, but initially when he pulled them out of his car, I was like, oh my God, what did you do? Because I had forgotten that the last of the Austin Healy BJ8s had a very strange piping color. They had like a, a silver chrome piping. And you can see it. You can kind of see it right there. It's very, let me get in close. Because it's kind of like, I don't know, guys, like, I, I don't know. It kind of looks auto zone -y. I don't know. It looks, it's not my taste, but it is original for the car. So we'll let it slide. One thing that is not going to be original in this car is the wheels. Now, right now it has painted silver wire wheels. This is exactly what the Healy car company would have fitted to this car. Um, Jeff and Donald Healy were big proponents of using painted wire wheels, not chrome ones. They did not like chrome wire wheels. However, this car will have chrome wire wheels put on it. I'm not a big fan of chrome wire wheels. It's an opinion. I know. I get it. But I really do like it on the painted wires. I really do. I think it, I don't know, it, it's still classy, but not too much. So... Anyway, it's going to get new wire wheels. Uh, they're already in the, the shop. I think Christian showed them to you in the video he shot. They're going on this car. Um, this is the deck lid and the front apron that goes behind the bumper. Everything's looking good. We are going to be working like gangbusters on this thing to get it done. I don't know what gangbusters means, but apparently it's a quick, quick working. I don't know. I don't know what it means, but we'll be doing what they do to get this thing done. And, um, It'll look, it'll look phenomenal when it's all finished. Um, there's a few things paint-wise on it that I'm not overly happy about. A couple of places where I was like, eh, how did you let that slide? We'll address all of that stuff on this car. So you can see that we've kind of moved some things around in the shop because of this. Um, next week, uh, you may see some updates on that car, uh, but you'll actually see updates with what's in this box here next week. Uh, this is the tri uh, Triumph. It's not a Triumph. It's not. Why am I saying that? It's the Sunbeam Alpine Seat Kit. I say Triumph because they, they kind of look like a Triumph. Have you ever seen an Alpine and then you see like a TR4 or TR250? They kind of look similar. I, I don't know why I do it. I've owned three Alpines in my life. I don't have a problem with this. I should know the difference between these cars. Anyway, uh, we have the seat kit there. Uh, we'll get those covered and in the car and hopefully that sunbeam will be going home here soon. Now, on to the last car that I'm going to talk about today. Um, you know, it's your favorite. I know you guys watching this, you love hearing about this car and it's the Jaguar again. Yeah. More Jaguar. Yeah. See it? It's still there. Lots of work has been done. Christian has been uh, working his his fingers to the bone here. Um, he has got the trunk pretty uh, pretty squared away here. It's it's looking good. There's a few things here and there, a few things on the rest of the car here and there that need a little addressing. We'll be uh, we'll be detailing this car here soon. Um, Christian is going to call the owner of the car and um, give him the information on the control module. We'll get the battery in it. We'll get everything running. We'll get the rest of the switches put in that he brought in. We'll get those installed and uh, wrap it up. It's on the home stretch here, guys. It's on the home stretch. She's going to look good. It's just in time for driving season. It's not, though. Uh, it's very cold out now. Good thing Jaguars have decent heaters in them. So, anyway. That is the long of it. Um, we have a few, you know, I've been doing some cleaning. You know, you see that? I mean, that bench, you guys haven't seen the top of that bench in any of these videos, I don't think. And now you can. Um, we got a lot of work ahead of us. We got a lot of projects coming in. We have, we've got another project that wants to come in. It's an MGB. Um, she usually has us do a bunch of um, winterization stuff on it. We got to find some time to get that thing in here. 
Um, we got that defender that needs to come in here and get work on it. We got to start working on this Healy. We got to finish up the Jaguar. We need to get back on the Triumph TR3. We've got a Laganda over there that we need to crack in on. And we have an MGA over here we need to do work on. We've got a Sunbeam. It's almost, it's almost like there's a lot of work here. Um, so stay tuned. Keep watching these updates. If you haven't, like, subscribe, notification thing, box bell icon thing that's at the top. Click on it. And you will see more of my gorgeous face every week telling you all about the ins and outs, the goings-ons of this shop. And it's, it's going to be good. So on that note, I will talk to you all next week, next Friday, hopefully, hopefully with an edited video. Hopefully we will figure that out. We're mechanics. We are not uh, video, videograph, videograph, videographers. We're not those guys. We don't do that. We're not cinematographers. We're not that either. We're mechanics. So <laughs> hopefully we can figure out how editing software works and we can make an edited video to help make the content look nicer. And that's all I have for you. So I will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a fantastic week. Hopefully you're somewhere where it's warm because it's not warm here. It's very cold and I'm going to go home now. So bye.